and a very good night to you. Well, tonight on the program, one of the highlights of the year in Gaelic games, the tension and the excitement of the Munster Harding final between Cork and Tipperary at Semple Stadium in Pardis. About 30 metres on that line. Jack Bergen breaks it down. And Horgan! It's just gone wide. Oh, it was so close to the butt of the post. Also in the programme tonight, we have football and action from today's Ulster final between Tyrone and Armagh at Clonus. Outside and finds him too. Still McMahon. McMahon gets it back in. Could be dangerous and it comes back into play off the upright. Well, that Ulster final coming up a little bit later on in our extended programme tonight. But first, as usual, we have the main headlines of the day in sport. Here's Eileen Dunn. Carry forward Willie Marr is hurt in a club match and could be out of football for two months. Sean Kelly is still seventh as Tour de France holder Fignon wins today's stage. And Kevin Atkinson sets a new Irish decathlon record. Well, tonight again in the programme are joined by Andrew Colloran and Eamon Cregan who will be making their Man of the Match selections for us a little bit later on. But first to the main action of the programme. Well, there's no denying that the past few Munster Hurling finals haven't lived up to the great excitement expected from this occasion, with Waterford, unfortunately, unable to match the all-round talents of Cork. But today, where well, all the indications were that Tipperary were ready to lift themselves again to their first provincial title since 1971. And there's no need to point out to you, of course, the significance of this year's championship for Tipperary. But I can tell you that this match was everything that we had expected from it. So let's take up the story now. And your commentator at Thurlis today was Mick Dunn. It's surely like old times again for the Monster Hurling final, with Cork and Tipperary together in the decider for the first time in 14 years. And to mark the occasion, this huge throng is back again. After 11 baffling and agonizing years, the blue and gold represented again in the Monster final. So a lot of responsibility on this team which is almost totally inexperienced as far as playing in the finals concerned. Many of them only very lately out of the under-21 grade where they won so many honours. Indeed, only one of these teams appeared before in the senior final. He's Noel O'Dwyer, who in fact played in 1970, the last time Tipperary and Cork clashed in the decider. And there's been a boost to the team with the news that Pat Fitzell is sufficiently recovered from injury. Consequently, there's only one change from the semi-final. Michael Doyle recalled to play at right corner forward. Cork now going for a third consecutive Munster title, so no lack of familiarity with the big occasion in this team, which has already won a major trophy this year in the centenary competition. Three players are appearing in their first Munster final. Dennis Mulcahy has been in the team since the start of the National League last October. John Hodgins also brought in during that winter competition, but Pat Hartnett came into the team as recently as April. For referee John Moore of Waterford, this final is the first senior championship appointment. It's the 25th monster final between them. Tipperary have won 14 and Cork 10. Jimmy Barry Murphy already on the attack on that Kalinan end, very close to the sideline. Jack Berg in the number two. This is Pat Fitzell about whom fitness there were some doubts. The line ball will be to Cork. Possibly the greatest and most electrifying atmosphere there's ever been in this famous stadium. And there have been some marvellous and great monster finals here. Let's hope this is going to be one of them. The crowd is huge. John Fenton misses that one. The court captain doesn't miss too many of those. But the angle was quite narrow. And he was hitting it against the diagonal wind that was coming straight across at him. John McIntyre was to it, but was nicely pulled on by Pat Hartnett. Tomas Volkahi from the right. And it's over. Kevin Hennessy, the one who opens the scoring. And the Cork flags can wave down there at that town end. Ralph Callahan driving that down jerk and it's over. It's Seamus Power, did he get the final touch to it? Now the blue and gold. The 
It was Ralph Callaghan who drove it in from about 50 metres out. Jer Cunningham advanced a metre or two and it finished in the back of the net. This is Pat Hartnett for Cork. That's into space for Sean Leary, but Jack Bergen is along with them. The white corner back right beside the corner forward here. The number 15, Sean Leary. Seventh monster final for him today. And the first monster final for the midfielder, Pat Hartnett here. Oh, that was badly in short, taken short. Grant Callahan knocks it down. Kevin Hennessy is in there, John Fenton, and the Tipperary nine is Philip Kennedy. Liam Marr gets it away. John Hodgins pulling out of defence for Cork. Now Patrick Sell here. Long striking right half back he is. Meant for Newell O'Dwyer. Dennis Mulcahy is in there. Johnny Crawley and Dennis Mulcahy pull together. John Fenton quickly away with it. Tomas Mulcahy out in the right corner. Dennis Carl along with them. Tomas Mulcahy gets inside. Now he's surrounded, outnumbered. Jimmy Barry Murphy then. Tim Crawley here. Inside to Mulcahy. He's in the large part. Tomas Mulcahy was slow with that, he got it to Jimmy Barry Murphy, Barry Murphy nicely into the pat of Tim Crawley, Tim Crawley lobbed it in and Mulcahy blast to the net, 11, nearly 12 minutes in the Munster final, and Cork the champions come again, Pat Hartnett with the centre, Bobby Ryan gets it away for Tip, Tony O'Connell, well intercepted by John Crowley. That's Pat Hogan. Nice point. He was 43 metres out. Tipperary introducing Johnny Doyle of the famous family. This is Dermot McCurtain here. John McIntyre. Tom Cashman. Johnny Doyle in here, he's playing right half ball, or right half, left half back. Bobby Ryan gets it away, he's moved into Mark Tomas Mackay, who showed the menace it can be in that raid that finished with the court goal. Sean Leary here, but Jack Bergen, Jimmy Barry Murphy the 14. And this is Bobby Ryan, now operating left corner back. John Fenton. Johnny O'Connell. This is Nicholas English. First time he's really been in the action so far in the Munster final. Oh, very confidently caught by Donald O'Grady then. And Donald's clearance to Pat Hogan. Ralph Callahan is on his own. He's not anymore, but he's got the clearance away. Philip Kennedy from about 48 minutes out. Philip Kennedy. Fourteen and a half minutes. Huge crowd obviously enjoying every moment of this. Pat Hartnett. Tim Crowley. Kevin Hennessy is unmarked. He's got the angle and the distance and the accuracy. Kevin Hennessy, it's stolen away from Pat Fitzell then. John Fenton now. This is Johnny Doyle, the 17, but it's Pat Hogan who robs him and gets it away for Cork.
cause of the attack for this final. He lobbed it right into the small part of the ground. Jimmy Barry Murphy, the greatest poacher in hurling or football, gets the goal. Ralph Callahan chased by John Fenton. The core captain getting it away. Sean Deary coming to it. He's just had a little bit of a medical attention for a hand wound. Jim Kyo. Sean Leary again. Foraging way outfield now. Beats Pat Fitzell this time from the 45 metre line. Sean Leary does it. Seven goals and six points he has scored in Munster finals up to today. Now he adds a point. So double scores it is with the champions ahead. 21 and a half minutes almost. Jack Bergen this time for tip. Oh, nicely caught then under pressure by Liam Maher. He's got Michael Doyle outside him. Oh, he didn't see him or he didn't ignore him. But Michael Doyle was completely unmarked about five or six metres to his right. Maher gets the free though. And Seamus Power, the one to take it. <laughs> Referee John Moore, very alert. In fact, it can be said in these first 22 minutes that the referee is right up with the play. Pat's Fitzell bends and settles that to his satisfaction. The wind is behind him, remember. He's dropping it low, though. Short into the large parallelogram. Johnny Charlie misses it. It's shot came back off the goalkeeper. And Tipperary have another goal. But Len Gaynor himself a great halfback, bringing Pat Fitzell out. And that's a disappointment for the number five. But he had been in some trouble. And he's replaced now by the 22, Brian Heffernan. So another of the younger ones coming in. 28 minutes in the first half. This is Tim Crawley. Only 28 minutes gone. And Tip have been forced to use two substitutes already. They've just got one active substitution left. John Fenton. Kevin Hennessy causing Tipperary so much trouble, not with a shot like that though. But he has been causing them a lot of difficulty in this first half. Jack Berger now. Michael Doyle has come out right half forward. Johnny Doyle. Dermot McCurtain here. Oh, he got in under Michael Doyle. Well there. Prevented by himself on the ball from going over the line. prefers the half-back line but willing to play in any position in that red jersey and playing so well in it today got over 30 minutes and that's gone too far left but it fell to Dermot McCurtain. Jack Bergen is under it. He's gone over. He was shouldered over by Kevin Hennessy. Uh, John Fenton. This one about 30 metres on that line. Jack Bergen breaks it down. And Hogan! It's just gone wide. Oh, it was so close to the front of the post as it came down from Jack Bergen's interception. Pat Hogan got it and was very near the bottom of the post. Pat Hartnett quickly out on the puck out. Nicholas English to Liam Maher. Seamus Power. The shot from Seamus. Four points be 
between them now, Seamus Power with three points and the goal early in the game. Tim Crowley knocking it on for Cork. Bobby Ryan getting it away. Pat Horgan is hooked by Philip Kennedy, but he gets it to John Fenton here. On that far sideline, John Fenton. What a magnificent point it was. John Fenton was 60 metres very close to the right sideline. And great accuracy for John. We're into the last minute of the first half. Liam Marno. What a goal would do for Tipperary before they go into the dressing room. Pat Hartman here. Ralph Callahan with this drive in. It will go to the left. to Tomas McCahey, Bobby Ryan is there. A magnificent corner back he's been in this last 20 minutes. And remember, not too long ago, he was in the attack. Michael Doyle to Nicholas English. Must be sooner said than done what a goal would do for Tipperary before they go into the dressing room it came from Bobby Ryan left corner back operating now down to Michael Doyle and he gave a square pass to Nicholas English who blasted home and what a lift that is for these young Tipperary men as they go to the dressing room The big crowds are back oh, to the Monster Final and the great Monster Finals are back too because this crowd have seen a mighty contest between these two. 35 minutes away now from an All-Ireland semi-final. Johnny Crowley here. Tony O'Connell, the number 11, has gone back centre half forward. Noel O'Dwyer is reverted to left corner. John McIntyre for Tipperary. Liam Maher. Jared Cunningham advances then. Turns away from the ball forward. Seamus Power walks But he was a little off balance, the number 14. It's understandable. He had first hooked the goalkeeper, swung around, and the empty net was gaping there, just asking to be filled with that ball. <laughs> Philip Kennedy for Tipperary. Finding Nicholas English, nice skill by the right half, jo or Michael Doyle, inside to Liam Moore, blocked away from him, Johnny O'Connell now, a sturdy centre half forward, just one between them now, a sturdy centre half forward, not so easily knocked off the ball, and the blue and gold have reason to cheer. Massive cocking out now with the win. This is Pat Horgan. He's gone centre half forward. Gets the point. Pat Horgan has moved centre half forward now in a switch with Tim Crowley. Tim Crowley's right, right now. Liam Maher for Tipperary. Tom Cashman knocks it away from him. Still Liam Maher recovering. Noel O'Dwyer couldn't get to it. Seamus Power, he's been fouled. He's just outside the large part of the ground. The full forward is causing problems for Cork early in this second half. Seamus Power himself will take it. 20 metre line it is. He takes the point and quite right too. of steady Seamus Power and Tipperary one point between them John McIntyre and Tipperary are growing in confidence with every moment that passes 
This is Dermot McCartan for Cork. Getting away from Nicholas English. Tim Crowley and Bobby Ryan. Tom Cashman for Cork. No, bounces away from Pat Hogan's fingers. Tim Crowley, Jimmy Barry Murphy. Out to Kevin Hennessy. He'll take the point. <laughs> Pat Hartnett. Didn't go far away, just knocked off the Bosovich Hurley, Philip Kennedy. Michael Doyle now. Michael Doyle is fouled by John Hodgins. The cornerback protesting his innocence. This one is about 30 metres out. Dead straight between the posts. Bobby Ryan there, who's had such a magnificent game, starting at left half-back and oh, moving it, no. with such confidence to left corner. Bobby Ryan and the ball not near him, hurting his ankle. This is Kevin Hennessy, way out on the sideline. They're both missing chances now in the second half. Dermot McCartan, the number seven. Bobby Ryan back on his feet. With the play, Nicholas English beaten by John Hodgins. Johnny Crowley now. Referee spotting a free, a foul. Paul Dooley coming into the Tipperary team. That's the end of the subs that Tip may use. This is John McIntyre, though. Johnny O'Connell jumping superbly. Knocked away from him by Johnny Crowley. John Fenton now with Johnny O'Connell. Johnny Crowley, John Fenton. Cork are in trouble. John Fenton here. Pat Hartnett now. Can't get it away. Can't rise it. But he gets it away now. Johnny Doyle, the 17. Tomas Martelli leaves it behind. To Liam Moore for Tipperary. Tipperary are playing with such bravery. Paul Dooley here, the last song. Yes, he's got it. Paul Dooley. Just a minute in the team. And he causes the Tipperary smile. Now Nicholas English, the number 10. Noel O'Dwyer here. The only man who before today had played in a Cork Tip Monster final of this 30. This is Liam Maher, blocked by Tom Cashman. Liam Maher again. He's got the... John Blake goes into the final. Donald O'Grady, the fullback, being replaced. Dennis Mulcahy has gone in fullback. This is Philip Kennedy. And between himself and Ralph Callaghan, they've tied up midfield. Dermot McCartan here, the number seven. Nicholas English robs him. Nicholas English playing handball with it. This is John Blake, the 17. Dennis Mulcahy now, the number two. He's now at full back, remember. John Fenton. This really is a test of heart and steel and spirit with these players out in Sample Stadium.
John Sheedy advancing along his line. Oh, Tipperary have got this monster final between their teeth. Cork now from And the youngest of them all on the Cork team. But the one who levels again for them. that had started so well. This is Dennis Mulcahy, can't get it away. Paul Dooley's the 19. John Hodgins for Cork. Ralph Callaghan. Pat Hartnett is owning midfield now. This is... Seamus Power, the full forward, just look at where he's operating. John Benton. John McIntyre, clutched out of the air and got away so quickly. Stakelin, who's one of the selectors. John McIntyre's display is reminiscent of him. This is Noel O'Dwyer. He must get a penalty. Noel O'Dwyer is fouled then. Inside that square. And Seamus Power has to make the long trick from the full back line. Seamus Power, 31 years of age. Seamus Power with the shot. He takes the point. Just under 10 minutes to go in a gripping spell rhyming final. Johnny Doyle here. Oh, they'll be cheering in Holy Cross tonight, surely, and all over Tipperary. If they win this final, remember they haven't been champions since the 25th of July, 71. This is Tony O'Sullivan. John Sheedy has it covered. Nicholas English now for Tipperary. Tom Cashman gets it away. Ralph Callaghan sidestepping Tony O'Sullivan. Half block. Pat Hartnett, Shawnee O'Leary off his fingers, Jack Bergen for Tipperary. Knocked away by Kevin Hennessy. Oh, good work by the number 12. That's good skill by Kevin Hennessy. That's Tomas J Jimmy Barry Murphy. Jimmy Barry Murphy. Look at Ozzy Bennett, the tip was sore. So delighted to see that go wide. Jimmy Barry Murphy's angle was so acute. Two points to Barry lead in this monster final. Nolo Dwyer and Dennis Mulcahy here. This is Johnny O'Connell. Dermot McCurtain, that'll be a 65 for Tip. Tony O'Connell with the scars of battle. Philip Kennedy with the 65, a little to the right of the post. No, Not the way Cork or Tip are playing at the moment. Three points between them now and Tipperary lead against Cork, the champions and the hot favourites. Johnny Doyle gets it away to his brother Michael. Now Tom Cashman here, the number five. 
three Tipperary men in to take it away from him. It comes to Noel O'Dwyer. Noel O'Dwyer from the right angle. Michael Doyle, the man who laid it on. Noel O'Dwyer got the point, and this is Dennis Walsh now for Cork. Tony O'Sullivan gets it the second time. Pat Hartnett is in there. That will have to be booked. Seamus Power must be booked. That is really... Look at Len Gaynor, one of the chip selectors. That's the angle that John Fenton has got. John takes the point. Three points now separate them. Can Tipperary hold out? Remember, they haven't been in a final since 1971. Liam Marr, the shot's gone over the line. The Tipperary dug out now. Look at Tommy Barrett, the man with the glasses, the county secretary. Pat McGrath, the sub, roaring orders there. The tension is fierce in Semple Stadium. None more so, no place more so than in that dugout. This is Tony O'Sullivan, the foul on the 21. Tony O'Sullivan, who played on at right half forward in 82 when he was 19 only. But it's John Fenton now. 35 metres out, a metre in from the sideline. Off the post it comes, and Seamus Power is there. The left corner back now, but remember he started to pull forward. This is John Fenton. Pat Hartnett is in there, Power again. Pat Hartnett. And John McIntyre coming away with it. John Fenton. Tomas Mulcahy. Pat Hartnett is on his own. John Seedy. Tony O'Sullivan. Tony O'Sullivan. And they're level again. It was Pat Hartnett's shot. John Sheedy saved at the rebound to came to Tony O'Sullivan. 32 minutes and they're level. That's John Blake for Cork. John Fenton unmarked. And it swings away to the left. Pat Horgan just can't look at it. He was recalled for this game, but taken out a few minutes ago. Really, it has been the monster final we all hoped it would be. And now will the finish level. If they do, the replay is on August the 5th. This is John Fenton. It's gone wide again. That's the second wide from the midfielder in the last minute. And now the boots are being discarded. Everything risked in these last dramatic seconds. John Fenton again, blocked by John McIntyre. The pass from Philip Kennedy to McIntyre. Michael Doyle. Michael Doyle's got it in his hand. This is Dennis Mulcahy, and he comes away with it. Jimmy Barry Murphy, Tony O'Sullivan has got it. Tony O'Sullivan's probing shot. That's it, yes, no, yes, shoot, One minute to go. 
Sean O'Leary playing in his seventh monster final. Has he won this one for Cork? One minute left. And really, it deserves to be a draw. It has been a fabulous, fantastic monster final. They've played it with ardour and with relish and in a great sporting spirit. And what a comeback on the team for this young lad. Number 21, and he's just 21. Tony O'Sullivan then. Seamus Power who's given everything, including scoring and moving back to the defence. Pat Hartness, Tomas Mulcahy now. Just that one goal, 4-14 to 3-14. They've got over the 35 minutes. And the free is to court. John Fenton wants the boots taken away. They belong to Pat Hartness. He's fellow clubman from Middleton. Now... John Fenton, he's on the 65 metre line. It doesn't matter though, it's over. But it's over. The Cork have won. The referee will probably end it when this ball is popped out. 4.15 to 3.14. And it has been one of the most invigorating monster finals. And it's all over. Are still the master champions. And Justin McCarty has rushed down to Tony Nealon as Cork celebrate. Tony O'Sullivan and Jimmy Barry Murphy, Tim Crowley, who started at centre half forward. And look at the man who got that win goal. Seven goals and six points he'd scored in Munster finals before today. Sean O'Leary gets the winner one minute from time. But what a magnificent display it was by Tipperary, showing heart and guts when nobody gave them a chance. Well, what an absolutely tremendous match that was. So unlucky, of course, for Tipperary. But I think that Cork's experience stood to them in the end. Well, after the match, Mick Dunn spoke to a dejected Tipperary captain, Bobby Ryan, and he suggested to him that this was, in fact, one of Tipperary's great displays. Yeah, it was a very, very encouraging display, full of fight and determination. They were, they were going to give in to the last minute. I'm sure it's not much consolation to you that people are saying it was one of the best monster finals in recent times, particularly yourself when you had to go off. That was a big disappointment for you. Yeah, it was very disappointing having to go off, but I think the lads played very well. We weren't given a chance going into the game. And we really, you know, we trained very hard for the game and the lads gave everything they could and, okay, we didn't, we may not have got the breaks in the end, but they played the Cork. I think they, they knew they were in the Munster final. Did you feel that leading up to the game, that you, you could play as well as that, that you would put it up to Cork the way you did? Well, the general opinion in the play, among the players was we were under no pressure. The pressure was on Cork and we, we didn't really have anything to lose coming into this game. We were, we were written, written off, really. We were inexperienced and... Well, <laughs> I think we, 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 we opened a lot of people's eyes today with our display. Shawnee, five minutes to go and you're four points down. Did you think you'd lost the title at that stage? Yeah, well, I think things were certainly looking very bad, but uh, we still had a lot of the ball, I thought, at that stage. And uh, it was a question of getting one score, be it a goal or a point. And I think that when, when John Fenton got the free, I think it, it was a wise decision to actually go for a point because I think there still was, was a four or five four minutes, minutes to go that then. stage and that brought it back to two points, yeah. if, I, if I'm correct. And, well, you, you never know in a game, really, to be honest, which I suppose it's easy to talk after winning. And um, things certainly looked bad and we probably had a bit of luck that was going in the last few minutes. It was certainly the hardest monster final you've got in recent years. Yeah, well, without doubt, that, you know, that was no comparison to the last few years. Um, well, we expected it to be that way, even though I didn't think it would finish up such a high-scoring game. You know, there were a lot of scores. This definitely was a tough one, you know. Um, it's only my second game playing over 70 minutes, you know. And it's really, I suppose, the last 20 minutes quarter now you would really find a pinch, you know, where all the training pays off, Nick. Yeah, the atmosphere was terrific. There was tremendous 
I don't know who, I, actually it was very hard to differentiate between Cork and Tipperary uh, who was shouting for who, you know. Um, but uh, it was great really, it was Could terrific. And by the way, the official attendance there today was 50,000 and I think Sample Stadium coping quite admirably with the big occasion. Well, in a match like that, I certainly wouldn't like the job of having to pick the man of the match, but happily I don't have to do that because we have, of course, with us Eamon Cregan. Eamon, having seen Cork beating Limerick a few weeks back, I think you'll know how Limerick, how temporary people feel tonight. I do indeed, um, Michael. Um, I felt the same way after Cork had beaten Limerick in Limerick, and I know exactly how they feel, and I'll meet them tomorrow, and um, I'd still, still be dejected, but in two weeks' time they'll have overcome all that. Well, Eamon, there were a lot of great performances in a match like that today, but you had the task of picking out one of them for your man of the match. Indeed, I had. It was a very difficult task. There were good players on both sides, but eventually I decided on Pat Hartnett of Cork. OK, well, we're going to have a look at Pat in action right now. In fact, uh, tremendous composure on a big occasion like this for a 21-year-old, in fact. That's true, and as he said there, that's the first time in 70 minutes. Here we see him getting a ball, avoiding players, and scoring a very good point. Um, he anticipated the ball coming out. This is another case where the ball breaks against him, he picks it up, as we can see, he goes one way, he's blocked, and he turns, and hitting on his weak side, supposedly weak side, he sets up another attack for the Cork team, and at this stage, he is keeping Cork in the game, with his tremendous play. Here again, he's loose again, he gets the ball, he's surrounded on three sides by three temporary forwards, nobody to hand pass the ball to, keeps his head, and eventually sets up another attack. He showed great coolness there for a lad of 21. In this case, we see Tomás Mulcahy passing to Pat again. Now, what he was doing inside the 21, I don't know. Took a tremendous shot, goalie blocked it, and Tony O'Sullivan scored. A, a great performance from, from Pat today. Well, that last score there certainly came at the right time for Cork because it looked at that stage like they were gone, and Tipperary were really looking like they were believing in themselves. Yes, I, I think at this stage Tipperary were actually believed that they were going to win. And, uh, but against Cork, you can never, until the final whistle is over, know that you've been beaten. Unless you're up in the stand receiving the cup, then you've Cork beaten. And that's unfortunately what happened to Tipperary today. Had you expected Tipperary to lift themselves so much in this match? Well, I would, if I was a Tipperary man, I would have been worried because if they had got over the first 15 minutes grand, but I felt they were a young side, first monster final, all except Nola Dwyer and uh, they might have got a little bit nervous, but they magnificently overcame those, those conditions and played exceedingly well. Well, now, think, uh, to think that after all the build-up to this match, Eamon, and Tipperary believing that they were on the way back this year, to have been beaten again, uh, the future for Tipperary, do you think that's going to put them back now several uh, paces again, let's say? No, I don't think so. Um, as I said, in a fortnight's time, they'll look back on that game and see the mistakes they made. And for a team that's the average age is 23, 24, that has been a tremendous experience. You have to learn how to lose before you know how to win. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happened today. Well, Cork have known over the last few years what it's like to lose in, on our Ireland final day. Do you think that this year now they've had two great wins over Limerick today in a match like that over Tipperary? This is Cork's year, do you think? Well, if you go back to, I think, 82 and 83, they had very easy wins in the Munster Championship and they were beaten in the All-Ireland. They have now had a very tough monster final and won. And I think they're, they're favourites at this stage to win. I'm sure Galway, Offaly or Westmead think otherwise, or Antrim think otherwise, but I think they're, they're odds on favourites at this stage. Mind you, it is noticeable that one or two of their more established players were taken off during that match today. Well, that's true. Um, there were two players taken off today, but it just shows you the strength of talent that they have in their substitute list. Um, you're as good as your last sub, and this was proven again today by the Cork team. Well, Eamon, I don't think we can let the occasion pass, uh, pass without having a word about the referee today, John Moore from Waterford, and of course uh, there was a lot of talk about this being his, his big day, and uh, he certainly coped with it very well, I thought. I think he did, he did a magnificent job. Um, very early on, he stamped his authority on the game. He was up with the game. He wasn't refereeing the game from the middle of the field. And on, on a number of occasions, um, uh, in the first ten minutes, I think, there were a little bit, players were pulling low. And at that stage, he, put, he stamped his authority on the game, and from that on, the game flowed. And there was tremendous flowing movement in the game today. I think we should make a mention as well about Semple Stadium itself, because it looked uh, absolutely beautiful today, and I think uh, they'd be very happy with their big day and, and how they coped with it. Uh, indeed, um, I'm sure the water that they found under the, uh, behind the stand uh, proved a big help to them. And uh, Semple Stadium is the best pitch in Ireland, there's no doubt about that. 
Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing the All-Ireland uh, final there in Adamon. But that's our man of the match from...